السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الحمد لله الذي أنزل على عبده الكتاب ولم يجعل له عوجة أظهر الحق بالحق وأخذ الأحزاب وأتم نوره وجعل كيد الكافرين في تباب وأشهد لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له الواحد الأحد الفرد الصمد الذي لم يلد ولم يولد ولم يكن له كفوا أحد وأشهد أن سيدنا وحبيبنا محمدا عبده ورسوله بلغ الرسالة وأدى الأمانة ونصح للأمة وتركنا على المحجة البيضاء ليلها كنهارها لا يزيغ عنها إلا هالك صلوات الله وسلامه عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه والتابعين لهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد First of all, we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wholeheartedly for the countless bounties and blessings that he continues to share upon us in different ways. Secondly, I thank the ICK management and volunteers for always giving me opportunities to share my little knowledge on Islam and other aspects of, of life with my Muslim brothers and sisters and people from other faiths on various occasions and in various, on various occasions and platforms. I also thank the ICK management and, impl- and, uh, and volunteers for their relentless efforts in serving Islam and Muslims. Third, the only complete love is Allah's love. No matter how much we try to prove our love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it will not equal the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created for us before he created us. He's our protector, he's our caretaker. He takes care of us in many ways. So even when we love him, we are actually worshiping him and he does not benefit whatsoever from our love. We are the the sole beneficiaries of loving Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So tonight, it will be the second part of this topic on proving our love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I hope we'll be able to share the 10 ways, of course, there are many ways in which we can prove our love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But tonight we will share eight. Last, last week we shared two. And tonight we will share eight ways in which to prove our love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Last week or two weeks ago, we talked about reading the Noble Quran with understanding and reflection. So one of the ways of proving your love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is to read the Quran. Don't gloss over it understand and implement it and we talked also about performing obligatory acts of worship as well as as uh, as optional ones so when you perform an obligatory act of worship and an optional one sincerely and wholeheartedly you are proving your love for allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so we come to the the second part of our topic tonight i began with this quote here on the first slide it says allah loves you more than you can ever love him the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is complete because he has the ability to save you. He has the ability to help you in whatever circumstances you are. For us as human beings, we may love our fellow human beings, our spouses, our children. But in some situations, it will be just an emotional love. We will be lacking the skills of, of, of saving our dear ones from danger. So you will see someone, for example, dying in front of you. You love them, but you can't prevent death. The only one who has pure, clean, and complete love is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we come to another, we come to uh, another slide. So among the ways in which we can prove our love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is to always remember him by mentioning his name, his name Allah, or other names. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has 99 names and attributes. By mentioning any of those names or all of them, praising him, glorifying him, thanking him, asking for his forgiveness, and being aware that he is watching over us. So when we remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by praising him, mentioning any of his names and attributes, asking him to forgive us, praising him, this is one of the ways of proving our love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Ra'd, وَيَقُولُ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا لَوْ لَوْ أُنزِلَ عَلَيْهِ آيَةٌ مِّن رَبِّهِ قُلْ إِنَّ اللَّهَ يُضُلُّ مَنْ يَشَاءُ وَيَهْدِ إِلَيْهِ مَنْ أَنَابَ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَتَطْمَئِنُّ قُلُوبُهُمْ بِذِكْرِ اللَّهِ أَلَا بِذِكْرِ اللَّهِ تَطْمَئِنُّ الْقُلُوبُ The translation is, still, 
those who believe say of you, O prophet, if only a miraculous sign would be sent down to him from his Lord, then you would believe him. Say to them, indeed, Allah lives to stray whomever he wills, yet he guides to himself whoever turns to him in repentance. Those are the ones who truly believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and whose hearts grow calm with assurance at the remembrance of Allah. Most assuredly, it is by the remembrance of Allah that hearts grow calm. This verse talks about so many things, but I'll focus only on two. The first lesson that we learn here in this verse is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who guides. But someone might ask if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who guides, so why should we worship him? We say there are two types of guidance. There is what they call hidayatul dilala. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala showed the way to each and everyone. He sent us prophets and messengers, miracles, books. He sent us a lot of signs to prove that he is the only one worthy to be worshipped. So if you make baby steps to follow the guidance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he will guide you more. But if you neglect the guidance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and choose to go astray, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will let you go astray. So whoever appreciates the guidance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and makes baby steps to follow the guidance, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will help him more. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make strides to come towards this person. Another lesson is whenever you remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you mention his name, you praise him, you understand clearly that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is watching over you. So with this remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you will rest assured that you are protected by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you will feel comfortable because you know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is with you. And when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is with you, no one or nothing will threaten your existence. And when you continuously remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, your heart will grow calm. So uh, one, another way of proving our love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is to constantly mention any of his names, the 99 names, especially the name Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to praise him, to supplicate to him, and to make sure even if you are in privacy, you do not disobey him. For example, as if you love your father or your mother, you will keep singing his praises, especially if you are in a foreign country, far from your father, far from your mother, you will keep telling people about your father. You'll keep telling people about your mother. If you love your wife, you'll keep telling people about her. If a wife likes her husband, she'll keep telling people. So, and this is just mortal human beings. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us those whom we love. So what about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? So when you love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you talk about him all the time. You encourage your friends to praise him. You encourage your friends to worship him. You encourage your friends to be aware that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is watching over them. So by doing so, you are proving your sincere love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we come to this hadith about remembering and mentioning Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. روى عبد الله بن بصر رضي الله عنه أن رجلا قال يا رسول الله إن شرائع الإسلام قد كثرت علي فأخبرني بشيء أتشبث به قال لا يزال لسانك رطبا من ذكر الله صححه للباني The translation is Abdullah bin Busr one of the companions of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم narrated that a man asked the Messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم Oh Messenger of Allah Indeed, the injunctions of Islam are too many for me to observe. So tell me of something to cling to. He replied, your tongue should continue being moist with the remembrance and mentioning of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this man basically, he, he was concerned that the rules and regulations of Islam are many, especially the optional ones, the sunnah. So there are many sunnah acts of worship, and I don't think I will be able to perform all of them. So the concern of this man, a Bedouin, was that he won't be able to perform all the acts of worship, especially the optional ones, the sunnah ones. So the Prophet ﷺ, what did he tell him? He told him, if you, if, you are, if you are concerned that you cannot perform all of them, then continue remembering and mentioning Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So you praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, whether there is a, a new blessing that you've received or whether you didn't, you have to thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala all the time. And you have to be sincere in that 
and you have to mention the name, one of the names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we'll be talking about that, the 99 names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you do so, this is a sign of your love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is a proof that you love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because the most beloved act of worship is to praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves to be praised a lot. If you need to earn the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, continue praising him by continuously praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you earn his pleasures by continuously praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be happy with you and and he will bless you more so point number four another thing that we can do to prove our love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is to be humble humility is equivalent to total submission to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we should abandon selfishness and pride in our human power and stand humbled, meek, and submissive as sincere worshippers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So humility means to avoid the destructive sin of arrogance because arrogance is an evil deed in which a person praises himself instead of praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Or he considers himself superior to other human beings. Or he rejects the truth because simply the truth comes from a person whom he regards less in value than him. So if you really love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you should be humble because everything you have, even your existence belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So if your existence belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, why arrogance? Why pride? There is nothing of your own. There is nothing, nothing special from you that entitles you to have the blessings and bounties from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's like, for example, if you love your father or mother and you travel, you live in a, in, in a foreign country, you travel to your own country and your father gives you a package to deliver to one of his friends. So you will be humbled because your father trusted you. And when you deliver the package, you will not show any superiority to the person who received the package because this, this is an honor from your father or you don't know what kind of relationship is there between your father and the person to whom you are delivering the package. With Allah are the best examples. So whatever you have is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So why arrogance? You yourself, you are created by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So if you really love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, be humble because you do not know the person you look down upon maybe is better than you in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, وَلَا تَمْشِ فِي الْأَرْضِ مَرْحَا إِنَّكَ لَن تَخْرِقَ الْأَرْضَ وَلَن تَبِلُغَ الْجِبَالَ الطُّولَ Surah Al-Isra. And you should not ever walk on the earth proudly exultant, for never will you, human beings, be able to perforate the earth with your, with your steps, and never will you be able to stretch up to the mountains in height. So even if you stomp the earth, you step on it strength, uh, strongly with all your strength, or you raise your head up in arrogance, you won't reach the mountains and you won't perforate the earth. So why arrogance? So your gate, dress, residence, and means of transportation, among other things, should denote humility. In whatever you have, you have, you should be humble. The Prophet وسلم, says, Man rafa, a person who humbles himself for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will raise him high. In this hadith, Abu Hurairah writes, Radiallahu anhu, and Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam aqal, ma naqasat sadaqatun min mal, wa ma zad Allahu abidan bi'afwin illa izza, wa ma tawadda ahadun lillahi illa rafa'ahu Allah, rawahu muslim. Abu Hurairah narrated that the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, said, Charity does not decrease wealth, and Allah increases the honor of who forgives. And no one humbles himself for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala except that Allah raises his status. So if you want your status to be raised by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, one of the things is to humble yourself. If you really love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you humble yourself. Because if you love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you should love what he loves. You should love whom he loves. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves his creatures. So when you deal with the creatures of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, whom he loves, then you have to be humble. Do not show arrogance. 
So a sign of love, of showing the love to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is to love whom he, is, he loves and to love what he loves. If, for example, you married a wife or a wife married a, a husband, one of the signs of your love for your wife is to make sure you love what she loves. Or a wife, if she loves her husband, she will love what he loves. And if we're Muslims, I will add, if whatever they love is within the parameters of the teachings of Islam. So pride, there is a quote by Ephesians, it reads, pride is about my glory. When you are proud, you are focusing on your glory. Humility is about God's glory. So when you love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you, you ignore your achievements and you focus on the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You attribute your achievements to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You attribute your success to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you do not attribute it to you. You say, whatever I have is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is a sign of loving Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, appreciating the favors of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, being submissive to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Another quote reads, humility is the solid foundation of all virtues. Humility is the solid foundation of all virtue, virtues. So even if you are a righteous person, do not exult in your righteousness. So you don't know whether your good deeds are accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So your good deeds should make you even more humbled because you don't know. And even when you perform good deeds, you are the sole beneficiary. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not benefit whatsoever. So nothing should make you proud. Nothing should make you arrogant, but rather you should humble yourself, emulating the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the best human being, yet he was the most humble because this is a lesson that he got from Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. Another sign or another way of proving your love for Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala is to give charity from things that are dear to you. You know, in Arabic, the word charity is sadaqa. And according to some scholars, the word sadaqa comes from sidq, which means truthfulness. So if you are true and sincere in your love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, give from that which you treasure, give from that which you love for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, you know, sometimes people may claim, may give you assurances, you know, you are my friend, I like you, I treasure our friendship, you, you mean a lot to me. If you have any problem, come to me, I'm going to help you. If you need any money. So this is a person, your friend, giving you assurances, but anytime you need money, you can resort to him. But when you are in a financial problem and you call the person who gave you assurances in the first place, the first time he will listen to you, the second time he won't. So he is not true in his love if he can't give from what he treasures. So if you love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, give charity, give zakah. And actually, in, even in the Quran, in many verses, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about zakah, he says a sadaq. So he, he, it's, he, he, he talks about a sadaqah or a sadaq. Sadaq is mahar. Also, zakah sometimes is referred to in Arabic as sadaqah. So, innama sadaqati lil fuqara'i wal masakin. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was talking about the eight categories of the people who can receive zakah, he said, innama sadaqat, alluding to zakah, which means if you are true, if you are true in your faith, and if you are true in your love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, give from that which you treasure. And according to psychology, according to research, men have the desire of amassing wealth more than women. Women also have the desire to amass wealth. And the desire in men is more because they want to take care of their wives. So psychology tells you any decision that concerns money, the man will think twice. So if you really love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when it comes to charity, give it wholeheartedly without complaining. You are doing so for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So give charity from things that are dear to you. This really challenges your heart. When clothes or toy drives come around for the poor, do not give the one out or all the fresh and clothes that you no longer need, but rather give new clean and beautiful clothes that you still treasure and need. So when people come, charitable organizations or groups of people, volunteers who engage in helping the poor and needy, and they need you to, um, to give out clothes for the poor and the needy, give the best. 
if you really love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and if you give for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, give the best because initially Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who blessed you with the skills of making money. So whatever you buy from that money, which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala helps you to make, it's, it's a blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So if you really love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, give the best. Have you heard how Aisha radiallahu anha, Prophet Muhammad's wife, used to give out coins in charity to the poor? Aisha used to perform the coins with musk before giving them in charity. So the coins or the money that Aisha radiallahu anha was giving out for the poor, she used to perfume them. And when asked why, she explained that the charity reaches Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala before it touches the hand of the person in need. And this is why the Salaf al Salih our righteous, our rightly guided ancestors, whenever a person came to beg of them, they would say, Marhaban biman hamala anni zad al akhira bidun ajr. So, welcome to a person who is carrying on my behalf my sustenance for the hereafter. Because the charity that you give to the needy person, you, uh, you benefit more than him. Yes, he will benefit, it will sustain himself, but you benefit more. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives you more on earth. And there are many rewards. So you have to thank the poor person who comes to you, who comes to you to take the charity from you, rather than frowning, yelling at him, looking down upon him. If you really love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, give those whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, give them with love and respect. So your charity will reach Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala safely. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Baqarah. Verse number 267. Ya ayuha al-lazina amanu, anfiqu min tayyibati ma kasabitum, wa mimma akhrajna lakum min al-ard, wa la tayammamu al-khabitha minhu tunfiqun, wa lastum bi-akhidhi, illa an tughmidu fih, wa'lamu anna allaha ghaniyun hamid. So the translation is, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in this uh, verse, all you who believe, give charity from the wholesome things you've earned, and from all that we brought forth for you from the earth. Thus, do not target what is vile or low in quality to give in charity. Yet you yourselves would not take it without closing your eyes to accept it and know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is self-sufficient. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is self-sufficient, worthy of all praises. So in this verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us to give in charity whatever we treasure the most. You give the best because you are giving it for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if you do so, you will get abundant rewards. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, wa ahsin kama ahsan Allahu ilayk. So do the best, give the best as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has been doing good to you. So you give the best for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if you do so, you will expect the best. At the end of this verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Inna Allah ghaniyun hamid. So we are talking about two among the 99 names and attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So after encouraging us and rather ordering us to give in charity whatever we treasure, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Inna Allah ghaniyun hamid. Ghani means Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is free from all needs and wants. He does not need anything whatsoever. Whatever you give in charity, Allah doesn't need it. It's to your benefit. You are the beneficiary. And by the way, research tells us that when you give charity, it boosts your immune system. But as Muslims, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands us to do something, we oblige primarily to seek the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Number two, being afraid of him. Number three, to expect rewards from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So when you sincerely give something for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala out of love, and you give it with love, and you love the recipient, you respect the recipient, your reward is double. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Allah ghani, Allah doesn't need anything from us. Allah is, is self-sufficient. Allah is independent. He doesn't need whatsoever from us. So Allah gives you, and he orders you to give, and when you give, he rewards you. Who does that? So someone gave you something, your father, for example, your father gives you 10 KD. He says, give this 10, this 10 KD to a poor man and you give it to the poor man and, uh, and your father rewards you. So you didn't do anything. You didn't do any hard work. It, just, it was just a transfer of money from one hand to another and you are rewarded. And Allah says, Hamid. Hamid means 
Allah is worthy of praises. He is the only one who is worthy to be praised because he loves to be praises and he um, he is always praised. He loves to be praised. He's worthy to be praised because he created everything. He gives everything. So he, he, he is worthy to be praised. And Hamid also means يُغْنِيكَ وَيَحْمِدُكَ عَلَى هَذَا الْعَمَلِ So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes you wealthy, makes you rich, makes you earn money. And then from that money which you earn by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala helping you, you give charity from it, then he rewards you. So Allah praises you. Allah praises you and rewards you for giving charity. Allah praises you and rewards you for doing an act of worship. This is also another meaning of Al-Hamid. He himself is praiseworthy, he's worthy of praises because he is, he, is, um, he is independent, he needs no one. And at the same time, if you oblige, if you oblige to his commands, he will praise you and he will reward you for that. So Allah tells us here, when you give for, for his sake, you give the best, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will praise you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give you more. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not neglect your deeds that are praiseworthy and are praised. So when you do good deeds which are praiseworthy, even your enemies will praise you. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will praise you for the good deeds you perform in front of the angels. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will reward you. So which means Allah doesn't need us, but whatever we do, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not neglect it. He will reward us for it. And this is uh, to prove to us that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is infinitely praiseworthy and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is infinitely caring, caring about us and he will always take care of us. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is uniquely generous and beneficent among others and constantly blesses his servants with different and multiple favors and bounties. How then? Would it be possible for those who enjoy his bounties and blessings to be mean, niggardly, and vicious? So if you really love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you have to give from what you love for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And when you give from what you love for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, give it wholeheartedly and thank the recipient. Treat the recipient well. Sympathize and empathize with the recipient. Do not show any signs of superiority whatsoever. Do not show, do not frown in the face of the recipient. Do not give him any indication that you disapprove, you disapprove of the behavior from him to beg of you, but rather cherish the moment, cherish the act, because by so doing, you are getting rewarded by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you're proving the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Jabir ibn Abdullah radiallahu anhu narrated that one early morning, some people approached the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. They, they were barefooted, skimpily dressed, wearing striped woolen garments, carrying swords on their, on their shoulders. So these people were poverty stricken. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was so sad. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, it was time for prayer. He ordered Bilal to perform the adhan, the call to prayer. So after the Salah, the Prophet ﷺ encouraged his companions to give in charity. And before I continue actually with this story, I'd like to share with you this, this quote. It says, taking pains to remove the pains of others is the true essence of generosity. This is a quote by Abu Bakr Siddiq, radiallahu anhu. Taking pains to remove the pains of others is the true essence of generosity. So when you take pains to remove the pains of others, you are proving your love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we come to the story of um, Jabir ibn Abdullah, how the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was happy when the people um, donated money, donated clothes, donated food for these, uh, for these poverty-stricken visitors who came to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and they were from the tribe of Mudar. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, among, among the people who gave donations, was one of the Ansaris, the Muslim inhabitants of Medina. Instead of throwing the coins or throwing the money on a cloth, he decided to make a good package that, that was beautiful. It was a heavy package, a heavy parcel. 
So he brought this person in front of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was happy. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Man sanna fil islami sunnatan hasana falahu ajruha wa ajru man amila biha min ba'di. Wa man sanna fil islami sunnatan sayyi'a falahu wizruha wa wizru man amila biha min ba'di. So the translation is, he who initiates a good practice in Islam will have a reward for it and a reward for those who act upon it after him without their word being decreased at all. And he who initiates an evil practice in Islam will bear the burden of that sin and the burden of the sins of those who emulate him without the sins being reduced at all. So which means if you do something good in Islam within the parameters of the teachings of Islam, you get the reward of doing so and the reward of the people who will be emulating you. So this Ansari, he came with a beautiful package which was very full of money and actually it was heavy. He was, he was carrying it with difficulty because he knew he was giving for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So he packaged it very, very well. And the Prophet sallallahu was happy. According to the hadith, his face was glittering as if, as if it was plated with gold. So because of the happiness, how the Muslims were quick to, um, to, to save their brothers who were poverty stricken, and especially how this Ansari made a very beautiful package to give it for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So when you love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and when you give, you give in the best possible manner, and you make sure you respect the recipient, do not show any signs of displeasure. If you do so, you are actually proving your love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Another way in which we can prove that we love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, love is not a lip service, uh, a, a, lip, a lip service feeling. Love has to be uh, felt inwardly, is, has, it has to be verbalized and then acted upon. So we feel it in our bodies, we verbalize it, and then we act upon it. So memorizing and reciting Allah's beautiful names and attributes, understanding them and acting upon them is among the ways of proving that we love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has 99 names and attributes. So we need to memorize them. We need to understand their meanings. And we need to practice them and then to teach them others. If we do so, we will prove our love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we will be rewarded immensely. Learning and memorizing the names and attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will increase our reverent love and awe for him, for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In a hadith that was narrated by Abu Huraira, radiallahu anhu, anna Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam aqal, inna lillahi tis'atan wa tis'ina isma. So the translation is Abu Huraira narrated that the messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, said, Allah has 99 names, 100 minus one. Whoever memorizes, understands, and implements them will enter paradise. SubhanAllah. It's not difficult to memorize the names and attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So you memorize them, you understand their meanings, you act upon them. You implement them, you go to paradise. For example, among the names and attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is Al-Ghani. Al-Ghani means free from all wants and needs, self-sufficient. In some translations, they translate, as, uh, they translate it as rich. But when I was researching the word rich, I thought, you know, it's deficient. It's not enough to be, a, to be, uh, to be the translation of the word Al-Ghani. So I decided to focus on two meanings free from all wants and needs, self-sufficient. So when you know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is al-ghani, you will make sure that you supplicate to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you beg of him as much as you want, as many times as you can. So ask for whatever you want. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has everything. Everything is owned by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. For example, if you have a friend or a father or a caretaker, whenever you have problems, you resort to them. Time will come when you feel shy, that you know this man has helped me for a long time. I feel shy to approach him again. But with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it's opposite. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants you to insist. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants you to continuously beg of him. The more you continuously beg of him, the more he gives you. And he tells us in Al-Hadith Al-Qulsi, oh, you sons of Adam, if all of you from the time of Adam until the last person before the day of judgment, if all of you stand in one place and all of you beg of me, you have needs and requirements and I give each one of you whatever they want, 
it will not decrease from what I have only like when you dip a needle in the sea. So you take a needle, you need you, you dip it in an ocean or a sea, take it back. What does it, what amount of water does it bring up? So if Allah was to give all of us what we wanted, you need 10 palaces, 100 palaces, 1 million crowns, whatever you need, if it's within the parameters of the teachings of Islam, if we're all to beg of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and if he gave all of us what we wanted, it would never decrease anything from what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala owns, except like the, 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 what a needle takes from a sea. So try to dip a needle in an ocean or a sea and then take it out. What will it bring? So when you know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is al-ghani, you will not feel shy to beg of him. You will not be um, embarrassed to beg of him. You will continuously beg of him. And when you know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is al-ghani, you won't be humiliated by a human being. You know, for example, you depend on someone and the, 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 that person says, I can't help you unless you do this and that. So he wants you to ponder to his whims and desires so that he can help you. When you know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is al-ghani, you will tell him, I'm sorry, I can't do that. I have Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So you will not ponder to the whims and desires of a mortal human being who wants you to commit a sin in order for him to help you. You know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is al-ghani. So this will give you confidence that even if no one is there to help me, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will do that. And if you do that sincerely, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will do it. For example, among the names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is Al-Qahar. Al-Qahar means the Almighty. He has power over everything. He's the, he's the creator of everything and everyone. He owns everything and he has power over everything and everyone. Al-Qahar means also the irresistible. No one can resist the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The vanquisher. So when you know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the irresistible, you cannot succumb to any empty, empty threats of a mortal human being. So you didn't commit a sin. You didn't commit a crime just because you are a believer. An enemy of Islam may try to rest your hand in order to relinquish your face. But if you know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is al-Qahar, you will say, no, I cannot relinquish my, my faith. Do your worst. So... Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will come to your rescue. So all in all, our proof that we love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, one of them, one of the uh, of these ways to prove our love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is to memorize his names and attributes, learn their meanings, implement them in our lives, act upon them, and teach others. So if we do so, we are actually proving that we love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The way you sing the praises of a human being whom you love, especially in, during his absence. So another thing that we can do to prove our love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is to perform the late night prayers, Salat Tahajjud. You know, we can talk a lot about Salat Tahajjud. It's a topic by itself, but I'll just focus on little points here. What truly separates the ordinary Muslim from a sincere devout believer is the ability to wake up before Fajr and perform Salat Tahajjud. So other people are snoring, enjoying the sleep, and you choose to wake up because of what? Because of loving Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Imagine, for example, you struggle to get sleep. Maybe you are an insomniac, and the most beloved person to you knocks at the door at around 2 a.m., 3 a.m. You will complain, you will nag, because you don't know who it is, but when you open the door and you see a surprise, your father, your mother have surprised you by a visit, a late night visit, you will cherish it, you will enjoy it. And, the, and your parents will know that you really love them. And because of the love, you will not care about the sleep. And these are just mortal human beings. What about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? You wake up at night, you are enjoying the, the sleep, you're having good dreams, and maybe you are an insomniac, you struggle to sleep, but when the sleep comes, becomes, uh, be, uh, when, when, you, when the sleep becomes, uh, becomes enjoyable, then in the middle of it, you wake up. This is, a, this is truly a sign that you love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, إِنَّمَا يُؤْمِنُ بِآيَاتِنَا الَّذِينَ إِذَا ذُكِّرُوا بِهَا خَرُّوا سُجَّدًا وَسَبَّحُوا بِحَمْدِ رَبِّهِمْ وَهُمْ لَا يَسْتَكْبِرُونَ تَتَجَافَ جُنُوبُهُمْ عَنِ الْمَضَاجِعِ يَدْعُونَ رَبَّهُمْ خَوْفًا وَطَمَعًا وَمِمَّا رَزَقْنَاهُمْ يُنْفِقُونَ Surah Al-Sajda. So the translation is, 
Indeed, they believe in our verses, which are revealed in the Quran, those whom, when reminded with or by them, by the verses of the Quran or by the miracles of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, fall to the ground in devotion, prostrating their faces down in Allah's reverence and highly exalt the praises of the Lord while they never grow arrogant concerning the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Their side forsake their beds at night to call upon their Lord in fear and help. And they generously spend in charity for what, for what we have provided as sustenance for them. So true servants of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they wake up at night to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So against all odds, although it was difficult to get the sleep, although they have work early morning, they need to focus, they wake up for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So one of the things that you can do to prove that you love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is to wake up and perform tahajjud. And there are immense benefits. It's all to your benefit. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not benefit whatsoever from that and other acts of worship, but you are the sole beneficiary. But if you do it, you are actually proving your love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, I see we are out of time. We still have two minutes. I'll just end with this. Keeping good company. The people you choose to surround yourself with somehow influence your relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because some people draw you closer to him while others take you away from him. So according to hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that if you are a sincere believer, love people for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and hate them for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So if you really love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, those who love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you will love them. For example, if you are a football fan and you support one player, and you come in contact with the, with the people who support the same player, you will love them because they love whom you love. And this is just a modern human being. So if, for example, you love your father and someone loves your father, you will love them because they love your father. You will love people who love your parents. You love people who love your brothers. So what about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Those who love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala love them. Those who hate Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala hate them. So you love someone for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You hate someone for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, So hahaul al-bani. The translation is Abu Hurairah narrated that the messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, said, a person follows the religion of his friend. So let each one of you consider whom to befriend. So if someone will get you closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, befriend him. And if someone will take you away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, stay aloof from that person. So I will end with this quote. It reads, a good friend not only cares about your relationship with him, but also cares about your relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So um, in this hadith, or oh, this hadith, which is a prophetic narration, means that a person is influenced by the conditions, words, and actions of his friend, and will imitate his behavior, the behavior of his friend, mannerisms and ways, whether consciously or unconsciously. So consciously, you may, you may not, but sometimes in your subconscious mind, you will emulate the mannerisms of your friend. So choose friends who will bring you closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and this will be a sign or a proof that you really love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. With this, I come to the end of the presentation tonight. And I, um, I hand over the mic to the, uh, to the host, Brother Atiq. So if there are any questions or comments, I'm ready to listen to the comments and to answer the questions. Bitaufiqum in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Jazakallah khair, Sheikh, for a beautiful lecture. Indeed, uh, there are many lessons for us. Uh, Sheikh, if you if you want, you can continue and complete your ten because uh, we are on the ninth one. So mm -hmm. we, can, we can have another five minutes and you can, can okay. complete. That. Okay, inshallah. Okay, inshallah. Um, point number nine is observing moderation in enjoying worldly pleasures. Preventing yourself from overindulging in worldly desires helps you to live a healthy and balanced life and keeps you in constant awareness of the transient nature of this world. For example, saving money is good but greed and miserliness are discouraged. So while there is nothing wrong with enjoying a delicious meal, gluttony or overeating is discouraged in Islam. So, and actually there is a point here. So if you really love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, observe moderation. Moderation is good for your health. In everything that you do, be moderate in it. Do not go to the extremes. So do not deny yourself the bounties of life. And again, do not 
do, do, not, do, do not overindulge in them. So tread the path of moderation. Because one of the reasons that we should do this is that our bodies belong to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Our bodies are a property of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So whatever you do to improve your health and wellness, you are actually worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. For taking care of your body, realizing that it belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you are worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is one of the reasons why the Prophet sallallahu says, whatever you feed yourself is charity for you. You work hard, you buy a delicacy, you enjoy it, it nourishes your body, but you are rewarded because you are doing it in the first place for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because your body is owned by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَابْتَغِ فِي مَا آتَاكَ اللَّهُ دَارَ الْآخِرَةِ وَلَا تَنْسَ نَصِيبَكَ مِنَ الدُّنْيَا وَأَحْسِنْ كَمَا أَحْسَنَ اللَّهُ إِلَيْكَ وَلَا تَبْغِ الْفَسَادَ فِي الْأَرْضِ إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يُحِبُّ الْمُفْسِدِينَ Surah Al-Qasas. So the translation is, rather, with all that Allah has given you, seek the glory of the abode of the hereafter, but do not forget your share of the good life in this world, but do good to, Al but do good to Allah's servants as Allah has been good to you. Yet, do not seek to sow corruption in the land, for indeed Allah does not love the source of corruption. So you enjoy the amenities of life, you enjoy the pleasures of life within the parameters of the, of the teachings of Islam, but observe moderation, realizing that your body belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and this will be a sign of you loving Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. To love your body for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to love your body, realizing it's a property of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to take care of it, you're proving that you love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Subhanallah, this is great mercy from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to reward you for taking care of your health and taking care of your wellness. So we should love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, and uh, actually, even though we try our best to love him still, we can't love him the way he loves us. So number 10 is to express your gratitude sincerely and wholeheartedly to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We are always showered with countless blessings, bounties, and gifts from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, yet many people tend to neglect thanking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and expressing their gratitude for what they enjoy. The more we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and acknowledge his blessings and bounties, and mercy, among other things, the more we feel his love and the more he continues to give and bless us. If you love someone, your father, for example, or your mother or your spouse, whenever they do something good for you, you will appreciate it. And sometimes people shed tears of appreciation. They cry because they appreciate someone. So why don't we do so shedding the tears of appreciation for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when we are enjoying a lot of bounties and blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And by the way, the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are divided into two. There are common, normal, usual blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Like you have eyes, you have ears, you have legs, you have a house. These are common blessings, but there are also blessings that come constantly without you expecting them. For example, you got good news that your boss bought you a car. You got good news that, that you know, your father has been promoted. Something that comes which you were not expecting, this is a blessing that we should thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for, as well as other blessings. So there are two types of blessings. Even if you don't get anything that makes you happy on a daily basis, still thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the blessings that you already have. For example, you have eyes, some people don't have them. You have legs, some people can't walk. You have ears, some people can't hear. So you have to appreciate Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you have to cry to shed the tears of appreciation. And by doing so, you are rewarded by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, Aynani la tamassuhum an-nar. Aynun bakat min khashiyatillah wa aynun batat tahrus fi sabilillah. So two types of eyes will not be touched by the hellfire. And when we say eyes, it's a person. So these eyes, if they are on you, you won't enter the hellfire. First, the eye that weeps out of fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So you are afraid of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You read the Quran. You read about the horrible events that will unfold before the day of judgment or on the day of judgment. You read about how Allah punished people who were unrepentant and died before repentance. You cry, you shed tears sincerely for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, not for the sake of showing off, you will be protected from the hellfire. And an eye that keeps vigil stays overnight to protect Islam and Muslims. So people are in jihad, you've been posted somewhere 
to protect the Muslims. So you try not to sleep. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will keep your eyes away from the hair fire. Some scholars have included an eye that sheds emotional tears when you express your gratitude for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So when you cry expressing your gratitude for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you get rewarded in, 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 in many ways. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَإِذْ تَأَذَّنَ رَبُّكُمْ لَإِن شَكَرْتُمْ لَأَزِدَنَّكُمْ وَلَإِن كَفَرْتُمْ إِنَّ عَذَابِ لَشَدِيدٍ So and remember, when your Lord proclaimed, if you are grateful, I will surely increase my favors upon you. But if you rebel against my commands and deny my favors, then indeed my punishment is severe. So if you are grateful, you will surely appreciate your favors, the favors of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You will benefit wisely. So first, you appreciate verbally, so you appreciate, you, you, you wholeheartedly, you feel this appreciation, you feel the blessing, the, the, um, the, the value of the blessing, you verbalize your appreciation, then you benefit wisely from what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed you with and you share with your fellow human beings. So if you do so, you've already appreciated and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give you more. So I think the five minutes, the bonus of five minutes has ended. So I uh, give back the mic to the host of tonight. And if there is any comments, I will be happy to listen. And if there is any question, uh, by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I'll be able to answer, inshallah. Jazakallah khair, Sheikh, once again, uh, for the benefit, uh, beneficial lecture. Uh, may Allah enable us to, you know, take lessons and uh, implement in our lives. Uh, uh, we have a couple of uh, questions from uh, Brother Tushar. Uh, brother mm -hmm. Singh, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I am a layman from Japan. How mm -hmm. can I increase the wakul of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? He is a layman from Japan. Yes. Now, first of all, I, I don't know, is he a Muslim? Um, but, uh, yes, it uh, looks to me because his name is Tushar. Tushar. So he says, how can he increase his tawakul to depend oh. on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Uh, to increase the wakul of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, yes. Okay. Uh, first of all, if he's a believer, he has to wholeheartedly um, implement the three pillars of worship. You know, there are five pillars of Islam and there are three pillars of worship. The pillars of worship, these are acts or things that motivate us to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. One of them is to love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So make sure you worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because you love him. And if you worship him because you love him, you have to love the act that brings you closer to him. So if it's time to pray, you love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Number two, be afraid of him. And it's only the fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that turns into love. If you are afraid of a human being, you will stay away from them. But if you fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you, you will stay away from sins and you will be at the forefront of performing good deeds. So when you do so, you will be worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This, this fear will turn into love and expecting words from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the brother should know that once you believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you worship him sincerely without ulterior motives, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will protect you on different, on different occasions and in different ways. And let him read more about the prophets and messengers. For example, let him read about Musa alayhi salam. Musa alayhi salam, when he planned uh, to, escape, to, to escape with the children of Israel from bondage in Egypt, he had planned it meticulously, but despite all of that, Pharaoh and his establishment were able to catch up with him and the children of Israel at the, at the shore of the Red Sea. So one of the, the children of Israel were panicking that inna la mudrakun, we will be apprehended. Musa said, kalla inna rabbi, in, kalla inna ma'i rabbi sayadin. Not at all. I have my Lord. He will guide me. So Musa alayhi salam didn't know from where the guidance will come didn't know how would he be rescued. In front of him, there is a huge sea, and behind him, there is Pharaoh and his army, and they are in between. There is no ship, there is no vessel, there is no anything with which to cross. They can't swim. He depended on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He relied completely on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Eventually, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told him, strike the sea with your rod. Then he struck it and it separated. So when you read such, such stories of Musa alayhi salam, Prophet Muhammad's immigration from Mecca to Medina, he had also planned it meticulously, yet some of the polytheists of Mecca were able to reach the entrance of the cave in which he was hiding. Abu Bakr Siddiq was panicking. 
لو نظر احدهم تحت قدميه لابصرنا if any one of them saw looked beneath his teeth, his feet he would see us the prophet sallallahu tells him ما ظنك باثنين الله ثالثهما don't think that we are only two allah is with us so allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blinded them so by reading stories of the prophets and messengers this will increase his tawakkul by reading the names and attributes of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala like al qahar and analyzing reflecting upon them this will he will increase his tawakkul and to associate with people who are strong in faith who will always encourage him to truly trust allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and depend on him i hope i've answered the question jazakallah khair sheikh uh, another question from the same brother tushar uh, mm -hmm. and i think this question is in the context of uh, when we are doing actions to prove that uh, mm -hmm. how much we love allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so the question is what do i do if i feel like i am showing off uh, within brackets says riya yes yes uh, actually the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam before doing any act of worship he used to pray to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make him sincere and to keep his sincerity pure so he can ask allah subhanahu wa ta'ala pray to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make him sincere and try as much as uh, as he can if it's an act of worship that he can do alone in not in the presence of people when people are not there then he can do it but again in some situations if you are an influential person you are emulated by a lot of people we say it's better to perform a, an act of worship in public rather than performing it in privacy why because when people see you do it they will borrow a leaf from you and by so doing you are getting double reward the reward of doing a good act of worship and the reward of people uh, people emulating you so all i could say is let him strengthen his his faith reading the quran a lot reading the names and attributes of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reading about prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and his companions and always before doing any act of worship to pray to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to keep his sincerity clean and clear and maybe he, he can um try to read books about sincerity sincerity is, is a very great uh, is a very huge topic in islam and also uh, or again to associate with people who are sincere who don't have ulterior motives who don't have any agenda who will encourage him to do acts of worship without showing off so the moment you feel that you're showing off let let, him, let the moment he feels he's showing off let him supplicate to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to keep his faith clean and to keep his sincerity clean and to uh, facilitate his efforts in getting closer to him jazakallah khair sheikh uh, for the answer uh, we don't have any more questions i'll just wait for another minute or so minute or so to just see that if brothers and sisters anyone has any question uh, i receive one question now just now i the question is i do most of good works but feel mm -hmm. that i am still a sinner what to do uh yeah um first of all when the companions of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam finished performing any good deed they would supplicate to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept it of them so let the brother every time he performs a good deed supplicate earnestly to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to uh, to to accept it of him and let the brother also do a lot of istighfar to ask allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive him the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam used to ask allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive him yet he was sinless he didn't commit sins one of the reasons was when he did he used to do so for many reasons asking allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive you per se is an act of worship asking allah by asking allah to forgive him he was setting an example for us because he's our role model so if the prophet who was who didn't have any sins if he was asking allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive him then what about us and sometimes he used to have missed calculations he wants to do something good for islam and muslims with according to his wisdom it's right but according to the infinite wisdom of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala it won't yield any fruit so allah corrects him so he would he would ask allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive him and also asking allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive us is an act of worship we are rewarded by that and there are some sins that we commit consciously and subconsciously without knowing so we should always ask allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive us and if he thinks that he is a sinner let him continue to repent to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and when we talk about repentance there are conditions that we have to fulfill 
for our repentance to be accepted. First of all, if there is a sin that you really committed, you have to admit you committed the sin. Number two, you have to regret it. Number three, you have to pledge you will never commit it again. Number four, if you wronged a human being, you apologize to that person. If you borrowed money, you pay it back. So you make amends with the person whom you wronged. And number five, you should be sincere. What I mean by sincere is sometimes a person is doing a business, he's a businessman, and his earnings or his profits begin to go down. So he complains to his friends that, you know, my business is not picking up like before. So they tell him, maybe you committed sins. So he repents, not because of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he repents because of the business. And if, if, he, if anyone committed major sins, he has to perform wudu and pray two rakats. It's called Salat al-Tawbah. So what I could say for the brother is to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless him and to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to clean his sincerity and after, after performing good deeds, to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept the good deeds of him and to say a lot of istighfar. So by doing so, asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive you, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will do so, especially if you do it sincerely and wholeheartedly. I hope I answered the question. Indeed, indeed. Jazakallah uh, khair, brother, for the answer. Uh, with that, we come to the uh, uh, conclusion of the session tonight. Uh, we have no more questions. Jazakallah khair, brother and sister, for your participation. Indeed, it, this was a very beneficial lecture. Uh, may Allah reward you, Sheikh, uh, for, your, amin, amin, uh, for your research and for sharing this beneficial knowledge with all of us. Um, brother and sister, inshallah, we will, uh, we will come back with another webinar next week. Uh, till then, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.